Okay, we're back. Even had a wardrobe change. Also, the uh, installation of LockTech was uh, was successful, so we're gonna see how this goes. Um, I believe I should be able to find it in my applications folder, um, and it should be under this tech folder right there. Um, and the one that I'm gonna use is this thing called Tech Shop. I'm gonna throw this over here so I can find it easily. Um, and then open it up and see what we get. Yep, this looks familiar. So um, what I'm gonna give you for this first exercise, just a very basic tech template. Um, I've already uploaded that to the home page. Uh, if you go to the homework exercises, there's a link here for the very first exercise. Uh, if you click on this thing, you, you might be able to see the link down at the bottom, it just uh, says um, dot PEX at the end. I'm going to save it. Which might take a little while. I'm going to put it in the 341 folder I have for myself. You can put yours wherever you so desire on your machine. Um, but basically what I want to do is once I get it on my hard drive, I'm going to open it. So I guess I can do that a little more slowly. Going to file open in tech shop. Um, and then it should be exactly where I put it if everything's running properly. Okay, double click on this. All right, looks promising. Um, so this is uh, a lot of tech source document, I guess. Um, you can change the preferences a little. I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not an expert with LaTeX at all. I just know how to make it do one thing. And this is it. Uh, this is kind of one and a half thing that I know how to make it do, which is to make this font a little bit bigger. Um, so if you need this in your console to be, or not console, but the source to be a little bigger, bit bigger so you can read it more easily, uh, go to Tech Shop Preferences, which gives you this. Make sure you go on the source tab there and then set and then whatever font size or font type you want. Uh, make sure you click OK before you close this up, otherwise it'll disappear on you. Um, basically, this is all set up. Um, the way LaTeX works is that it enables you to like clearly establish what codes go around which pieces of font and also the sort of codes for formatting the document. Um, it's very kind of restrictive, which makes me normally not want to use it, um, but it does IPA perfectly, which I cannot say it's the same for uh, Microsoft Word, even if you downloaded that uh, Dulos SIL font. Um, so it's got a lot of codes in here for just how to format the document and how to create a document. Don't change anything up here. Don't mess with this at all. You don't need to worry about it. Um, it's got a little stuff you might recognize here, Linguistics 341, name transcription exercise. Don't mess with that either. Just go down to the part at the bottom here, um, which is the part of the tech file that you need to worry about. Um, so there's three lines. One is write your name in normal orthography, write your name in phonetic transcription, and I've given you a, an example transcription of my own name. We'll go over the specific codes you need for this, but I just want to show you basically how LaTeX works. Um, for this, um, to go from this strange sort of code, which is not really user friendly, to something that looks nice and familiar, just click or hit the typeset button. It'll spit out a bunch of like instructions to itself, and then all of a sudden gives you a PDF file, which looks nice and beautiful. Um, we can zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better, hopefully, maybe. Um, <laughs> zoom window, no, it's gonna make it do that. All right, uh, now we can see it better, good. Um, so great, <laughs> uh, you can see those things I pointed out to you earlier, and instead of some weird codes, it's giving me IPA, the IPA transcription of my name. Uh, that corresponds to these three lines right down here. And you can see uh, the part that kind of got converted is this business here going to what looks like IPA right there. Um, basically, the tool it uses to do that, if you go up here, you can, you can see it has this thing called TIPA. Um, it's part of the package that the program needs to use to interpret this stuff. Uh, the command it uses, this is nor basically written like you would normally type up, say, a word processing document with kind of an extra line between each one. 
um, it has to use this text IPA command. So the way that works um, generally is just say text IPA and then put two um, curly brackets after that command. And then anything in here will be, will be interpreted as IPA font. Um, and so you notice that I put in this particular one, um, within those green brackets, the curly brackets, there are square brackets, which is what I told you every single sort of IPA phonetic transcription should be enclosed in. Um, I can go back here and eliminate those. You can see how that'll change um, around my name. We can Every time we change something, if we want to see what it looks like in sort of the normal document, we just have to hit the type set command again. It goes to this whole compile thing. Uh, and you can see it got rid of those um, brackets around my name. We don't actually want to do that. That's just so you know what's going on here. You wind up with like a lot of brackets and curly cues and slashes and stuff. So that's kind of ugly and can be hard to interpret, but um, that's where it's coming from. Um, so I, uh, right, um, we're kind of on the fly, figure out what I want to do here. What I want you to do is uh, to first write your own name in normal orthography. I think we're going to go with Justin Trudeau, if I can remember all the codes for that. Um, actually, there's a few that um, I'm going to have to look up on my other computer over here to the side. Uh, but um, as I do that, uh, I'll point out to you how it works. So the first sound in Justin's name is a J. It's an affricate, which you might remember from 201. Um, there's the code for that is D with a capital Z or a Z. Um, if I go typeset, you'll see it spit out to what looks like a J. Um, if I want to, I can put a tie bar over the top of those two sounds to indicate that they're together in some meaningful sense. I'm just looking up my code for that. You don't have to memorize these codes at all. Uh, I do want you to memorize the IPA so that if you don't, even if you don't have LaTeX around, you can just like scribble it out, uh, you know, for when you do go out to um, the Amazon or wherever. Uh, it's important that you be able to use it. Uh, so Justin has um, the first vowel in his name is a, uh, which is symbolized with a two, kind of unfortunately. Um, and then the rest of it looks like basically as you would spell it, except there's a capital I for the I right here. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Yep, so we're getting closer. Um, we can also put his last name in there. Uh, I'm gonna do it relatively simply, so we can just run through this exercise, but you'll have to do the same thing for your name. You'll just have to figure out what the appropriate symbols to use are. Okay, Justin Trudeau, let's typeset that again. And it's looking pretty good. The one thing I still want to add in here are um, the uh, indications for stress. There's actually as well something else that happens. Um, Trudeau, uh, I'm not exactly sure how it might would be pronounced in uh, Quebecois French. We don't really have to worry about that. Um, oftentimes in English, a T uh, before an R, you'd expect it to be aspirated. Um, the uh, aspiration symbol would be that slash super H, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's not a super H, it's just a superscripted H like that. Oftentimes though, that can be converted into a uh, sound. Uh, I'll explain a little more why in class at a later date. Uh, but if we put in a capital S there, it turns into the esh, and now we have another um, affricate. So to put that in under a tie bar, we do the same thing. Um, so just to point out what I'm doing here, which I didn't really point out last time, this slash T command says I want a tie bar, and what I'm going to tie together is anything within the green brackets that come after it. So uh, the T and the esh. Um, so that should work. Again, it's just I'm just double checking my work here as I go so you can see it. Uh, the last thing I wanna do is put stress um, in his name. So in Justin Trudeau, um, his first name is English. So like many English words, it has stress on the first syllable. I gotta remind myself exactly how to make stress or yes, put stress in. Um, it's pretty simple, it's just the double quote mark. Um, and then his last name is French, so that like many French words, tends to have stress on the second syllable or the, the last syllable of the word. So we just put a double quote mark right before the last syllable, do or Trudeau. 
Um, right. And that will spit out with the single mark, which is the IPA, IPA convention for transcribing stress. Yeah, that's how this works. Uh, what I want you to do um, is uh, do this for yourself. You can double check it as you work through it um, by clicking this typeset button to see how this spits out after you enter all the codes. Uh, I don't really need to see the PDF file so much. You can send that to me if you want um, to save it. Actually, yeah, where, where do you save it? I'm not even gonna ask you to save it because I don't know at the moment. I'd have to look it up. What I do want you to save is this, name transcription template. I want to, you to give me this TEX file. Um, so for that, uh, it's saving here automatically as just the name transcriptions template. Um, you can either s send that to me and I'll figure it out through your email or through your D2L account, uh, who you are. Or you can rename it as a Justin Trudeau IPA or something like that. Um, I'm not really expecting uh, the prime minister to take my class, but if he did, this is what he would do. Uh, that should be saved somewhere in your um, hard drive. Uh, I think this might actually still be uh, on in my download. No, actually I saved it. That's right. I did save it to my... 341 folder, which would only make sense. Is that correct? Yes, it is. it's right there. So I got a file in my uh, 341 folder. You should get one of your own. Uh, do this before Monday the 18th um, and just send that to me by email or drop it onto the Dropbox in D2L um, by 11 a.m. that day. So I can take a little look at it right before class. Hopefully that covers everything. Actually, no, I take it back. There is one other thing I should cover before uh, I say goodnight, which is what happens when things get screwed up. So let's say um, instead of this stuff, I mistakenly put, I don't know, hope, I'm going to assume this isn't going to work. Instead of a, a T, no, let's put an R, that's right next to the T on the keyboard. What if I just screwed up, made a mistake with the coding, I go to typeset, darn it, that worked. Uh, <laughs> I should really study this up a little bit more before I show you how to screw up. Uh, but I guess if you're trying to screw up and things go right, um, not too bad, right? All right, putting in a Y. Y is also next to the T on the keyboard. Um, and it couldn't interpret it when it went to that line. Um, so it just gives a question mark when it runs to this little console bit. Um, that might happen to you if you put in the IPA code in an incorrect way. What I would recommend you do in that case is you have to troubleshoot. Um, so uh, basically I would recommend eliminating things until you find a thing that makes it stop doing that. Uh, kind of one by one, uh, take stuff away until it works and then add it back in um, in a way that makes it obvious, which is uh, the part that's causing the problem and how to fix it. Uh, I'm gonna give you a, a list of codes uh, that'll show you um, how to type in the IPA. And again, the sort of benefit of this is that it looks perfect every time once you do get it right. Uh, and you can't really do that with, uh, with the good old Microsoft Word IPA uh, font set, unfortunately. Um, yeah, there's other little magic tricks going to work with this uh, with your transcriptions behind the scene. We'll look at those more when we get into class on Monday. Um, that's all I've got for now. Hopefully this makes sense, but I'll explain it again in class. See you then.